So last week, uh, we began a series on pursuing, on pursuit. And uh, last week, we looked at the subject of pursuing the right vision, pursuing the right vision. And we're going to continue on with that theme of, of pursuing vision and talking about kind of our vision as, as a church. And the start of our vision statement for this church is that we exist New Life City Church exists to be a place where the glory and the presence of God flows freely through worship. We want to be a place where the glory and the presence of God flows freely through our worship. We believe that we need to be a people who pursue the presence of God. We need to be a church that pursues the presence of God. David, in Psalm chapter 84 and verse 2, he writes these words. He says, my soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. And he says, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. There's some kind of a desperation in those words, a desperation, a cry from the heart of David. I'm crying out for you, Lord. I'm crying out for your presence, God, because I I need you, Lord. I need you. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. I wonder, is that us today in this place? I wonder, is that us in our walk with God that we can say, my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God? Are we a people that pursue the presence of God? The word pursuit, the definition what it means is to follow in order to, to, to overcome, to overtake, to capture, to kill, to chase down. So there is, there is something to do with pursuit that is different from following. Whenever we are pursuing, then there is a purpose in the pursuit. There is purpose in the pursuit to follow someone or to follow something then, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is, is an end goal or result in that. Sometimes we can follow just to observe. Sometimes we can follow just to watch. But in order to pursue, then the end goal, the end objective is to capture. So whenever we talk about pursuing the presence of God, we are pursuing His presence in order to capture His presence. I don't know in your life if you know what it is to pursue or to be pursued. I remember driving home one night. This is going back probably about 20 years ago when I was two and I was driving. And uh, I was making this left-hand turn. And I remember as I was making the left-hand turn, someone crashed into the back of my car and kind of made the car turn a bit, kind of tilted a bit, um, and jolted it round. And it kind of, as a, as, a, as a car spins a little bit, and I'm, and I'm stopped there, and, and instantly you realize someone has, has connected, has crashed into the back of my car. And so I stop, and, and I'm looking around to see where the car is that has crashed into me, and I can see over my right-hand shoulder this car that has stopped in the road. And I'm watching, and I'm waiting, because my first instinct is, are they going to drive off, or are they going to stop and get out? They drove off. And I watched them driving off and take, up, take off up the road. I pursued them with an objective to overtake, to capture, and that if needs be, kill. <laughs> no, I know I wasn't going to do that. But, but I was in pursuit. I was like, no, you don't just crash into me and antique yourself off. That doesn't work. That doesn't happen. And I went into pursuit. I pursued them. I'm on the phone to my dad. He's on the phone to Les. Because I'm not too far from his house and, and, and we're, I'm driving around and I'm explaining to him I'm driving around this road and that road. He jumps into the car, into the car and we end up in this place and uh, we pursued them. And uh, oh my goodness, I got the car and the police turned up and these two older gentlemen turned up. They were kind of hiding in behind of the house. And this is like the middle of the night and all I can remember was the guy, one of the guys wearing Homer Simpson slippers. And they were drunk. Two of them were drunk. No wonder they went into the back of me and the police let them go because I didn't witness them getting out of the car. And, uh, and so the police said, well, we don't know if they were driving the car. Typical police, say no more about that. Um, but I went into pursuit. I'm like, I'm catching you. I'm chasing you down because you don't crash into the back of me and drive off. Doesn't work like that, people. Just take note. I was in pursuit. Do you know what it is to pursue something? Do you know what it is 
to have something so you're just so engrossed with this. That was the only thing in my mind. I've got to catch that. I've got, to, I've got to take hold of that. I've got to capture that in us to pursue the presence of God. We are pursuing something that we want to take hold of, that we want to capture, that we want to get our hands on. David was a man who knew what it was to, to pursue and to seek after the presence of God. He had an understanding of the presence of God like no one else did. He loved the presence of God. He loved being in the presence of God. He had 24-7 worship going. He spoke words like, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I was glad whenever they said to me, let's go to church. Because David knew I want to go and I want to be in the presence of God with other people. So he said, I'm glad. I was happy whenever people phoned me and messaged me and said, we got to get to church. He said, one thing I ask, one thing I seek to dwell, to dwell in the house of the Lord to be in the presence of God. That's the one thing that I'm looking for. It's the one thing that I'm seeking that I will be in the presence of God because David had an understanding of what it meant to be in the presence of God, to pursue his presence, to seek him out. To pursue means that you have this focus, this determined focus. I want to capture that. To seek comes from a, 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 a word that means to, to be zealous for. Zealous, to be zealous for. So, so this word pursuit and this word seeking, I think kind of go hand in hand because they kind of, they, 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 they express, they give out this connotation of, 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 of being determined, of being passionate. I want to catch that. I want to capture that. I want to take hold of that. We are determined and we are passionate. And so we've got to be a people that will seek Him. Seek his presence. To seek his presence means to seek his face. Seeking the face of God, pursuing his presence, I believe are very much similar. Sometimes we only want to seek the hand of God. We only want to see what God can give us, but we're talking today about seeking the presence of God. And some people may well be thinking, right, okay, we want to catch hold of the presence of God, but is the presence of God not within us? Does He, he not w live within us? How can, we, how, how can we draw near? How can we, we, we pursue? How can we take hold? How can we capture something that is already within us? How can we do that? How can we take hold of that? I think that, and I believe that whenever we talk about, about drawing near to God, about pursuing His presence, about seeking His face, then it's about our heart's desire to have greater intimacy with the Father. Whenever we talk about pursuing the presence of God, we're talking about our heart's desire to have greater in intimacy with God the Father. So yes, he, he may already be living within us, but how intimate are we with the Father? And whenever we talk about pursuing the presence of God, we're talking about greater intimacy. See, sometimes the intensity of our pursuit of God is dependent upon the intensity of the situation that we're going through. We'll talk about this in just a, in just a few minutes and we'll develop this, but sometimes the intensity of our pursuit of greater revelation of God, of our pursuit of the presence of God, of our pursuit of drawing near to Him is directly dependent upon the intensity of the situation that we're going through. So whenever we're going through trouble, we tend to intensify our pursuit of God. Are you with me? Is that just me that does that? God's desire since the Garden of Eden has always been to have relationship with us. That has always been the heart of God. God has always been passionate about this. I believe that this is like number one on his list. It's probably the only thing on his list is that he wants to have an intimate relationship with us. And so we're singing songs like, he loves me, oh how he loves me. The story of Christianity is about a God who loves people. It's about a God who is determined to pursue after us. And ever since the Garden of Eden, since Adam and Eve, God has been desiring to have relationship with us, with his people, with his creation. Sometimes what we do though within Christianity is we make rules outside of relationship. Everything about Christianity should be based on relationship. I have conversations with my boys all the time. 
Because they're getting to an age, especially my eldest, around about watching YouTube and about, about the internet. And, uh, and we got to be so, so careful about internet and about games on PlayStation and Xbox and stuff like this here. So, so Judah's coming in and he's saying, but all my friends to have phones and they're on the internet and, and they're able to, they're playing, uh, what's the one where to steal the cars and the get uh, GTA, what are you? Grand Theft Auto. And he's wanting all of these games that are, whenever you go to the shop and it says 18 on them. And so I'm trying to explain to him that the reason it's got an 18 is because there's stuff in there that a 10-year-old should not be watching and a 10-year-old should not be playing because it will have an effect on your young, developing mind. Now, if I, as a father, just set out a rule and a regulation, you're not getting it, then that's rules outside of relationship. But because I have relationship with them, I'm able to sit down and try as best as I can to get through to a 10-year-old. Listen, because I have relationship with you, because I care for you, because I love you, because we want to have the best for you, we're trying to protect you. And so because we have relationship, you're my responsibility. So this is not about rules for rules sake. This is not about destroying your life. This is not about making you feel unhappy. This is about us trying to protect you. You see, God puts rules in place because he wants to protect us, because he wants greater, intimate, deeper relationship with us. And whenever we do things on our own accord, as we talked last week about pursuing the right vision, when we pursue our own vision, then it takes us away from God. And there's very much an opportunity and, and a chance there that we will mess up. In fact, we will. And it will destroy and ruin our lives. And so God's saying, listen, I don't want you playing that. I don't want you doing that. To maybe get on like a 10-year-old. Yeah, but I, everybody else is doing it, so why can't I? And God's saying, listen, I love you. I'm trying to protect you. I want intimacy with you. I want a deeper relationship with you. That's God's desire for us. Everything should be about Christianity. should be encapsulated within relationship with a loving heavenly Father. We're the ones that messed up. We're the ones that walked away. We're the ones that have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And God is constantly pursuing us. But we must also pursue His presence. I believe that the presence of God is very much connected to worship, to prayer, to studying His Word. That's why whenever we, we write in our, on, on our vision statement that we want to be a place, we exist to be a place where the glory and the presence of God flows freely through worship. Worship helps us connect with God. Worship and prayer, His Word, they help us connect together. So that's, for me, a part of the, the reason why we worship in this place is that it helps us connect with heaven. It helps us connect with the God of heaven, with our Father in heaven. And so whenever we talk about pursuing the presence of God, we are talking about setting our attention our mind, our heart, our attention, our focus on Him. Turning our hearts towards Him instead of the other things and not letting other things consume us or get in the way of God the Father. Not that there's anything wrong with these other things, but in the proper context, pursuing the presence of God is about being more aware of Him being more aware of who He is, and being more aware of Him in our lives, in our circumstances, and in our situations. Turn our attention and our focus to God. In First Chronicles chapter 22, in verse 19, it says this, it says, Now set your mind and heart to seek the Lord your God. Set your mind and heart to seek the Lord your God. In other words, I think that there's intentionality there. We've got to be intentional about seeking the face of God. We've got to be determined. We've got to say, okay, I'm going to seek God. I'm going to turn my attention to Him. I'm going to turn my heart towards Him. Paul says to the Colossians, if you then are being raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Let me finish off with this. I'm going to give you three reasons of the why. Why we pursue the presence of God. Why, why, why should we have to pursue the presence of God? Why, why can God not, not come to us? You know what I mean? I know, that, I know that He sent His Son Jesus to die for us. I know that He's redeemed me, that He set me free and, and, and all of that stuff. But 
why do I have to pursue Him? Why do I have to go through periods in my Christian walk where it seems like God is distant? It seems even that God is absent, that God is not here, that God has lost interest in me. Why should I have to pursue His presence? Why should I have to be determined? Why does it have to be that difficult Maybe they're just questions that I ask. I don't know if you ask those questions, but certainly through my life, they're questions that I've been asking. Well, God, where were you? Why could I not feel your presence? Why did you seem so absent? Why did you seem so distant whenever I, I needed you most? Why do I have to pursue hard after you? Why do I have to seek you so, so hard? Why, why does it have to be so difficult? I'm going to give you three reasons. Number one is all to do with value. God wants us to value His presence. God wants us to value His presence. You see, you will pursue and seek after that which you place value on. Like we said earlier, the more intensely that you pursue something will mean that there is value attributed towards that which you are pursuing. So how much do we value the presence of God in our lives? I think that God wants us to value His presence. I don't think that God wants us to take His presence for granted. I think He wants us to place extreme value on His presence. If you were to lose something, then, you know, if, if you were to lose a pound, then, you know, some of you would be, that's just a pound. Some of you will be like, it's a pound. i got to get it back. But I think for most of us, I lost a pound. But if we were to loss a thousand pounds, not that any of us in this place has a thousand pounds, apart from Tony Main, but uh, the greater the value on that which we lost, then the greater the intensity of the pursuit in finding that. So how much value do you place on the presence of God? And I think that God wants us to value His presence high above anything else. God wants us to value Him, to value His presence, to value His relationship with us, to value our relationship with Him, to value that relationship in the same way that He values it because He places extreme value on His relationship with us. In fact, so much value that He was willing to die for it. That's the value that God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, places on His relationship with us. That Jesus Christ is willing to come and to die on a cross, to have relationship with us, to create a way to the Father. How much value do we place on our relationship with Him? How much value do we place on seeking His presence? Thanks so that whenever we find Him, we not let go of what we have. If it's something worth chasing after, if it's something worth pursuing, if it's something that we place extreme value on, then once we get hold of that, we will not want to let go. Is that how we are with the presence of God? Is that how we are on a Sunday morning? When we have opportunity to gather as the body of Christ to corporately worship Him, to place value on Him, to give Him all the worth that He is due, all the honor and the praise, or do we place more value on a cup of coffee in a coffee shop? I don't know. David constantly sought the Lord. Psalm 27 verse 8 says, My heart says, seek, the, seek, your, seek His face. Your face I will seek Psalm 63, when he was in the desert of Judah, and he says, You, God, are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. He desperately sought after the presence of God. He placed value on the presence of God. So we must also place value on the presence of God. Secondly, I think that God loves it whenever we pursue him. I think that God loves it for us to chase after Him. I think that God enjoys that because He understands then He knows if we chase Him, if we pursue Him, then He understands and He knows you place value in me. 
You place value on relationship with me. You place value in wanting to capture me in your pursuit of me. I think that God loves it whenever we chase after him. But we're given a choice. Adam and Eve were given a choice in the Garden of Eden. That's the whole thing, you know, so, some people come up with the question, you know, well, why put this tree in the garden in the first place? God is always about giving us choice. Do we choose to pursue Him? Do we choose to pursue the right vision? Or do we choose to pursue our own vision? Do we choose to pursue after Him? And yes, fall into obedience of His rules and His regulations in the context of relationship with Him? Or will we make up our own rules as we go along? We pursue after Him. He has given us that choice to follow Him, to value Him. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 17 says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me will find me. I love those who love me. So does that mean that He doesn't love anybody else, that He only loves the people who love Him? I think that there's something different here. I think that God loves it when we love Him and whenever we put that love into action to pursue after Him and seek after His face and seek after His presence. He loves those who love, love Him. Hebrews chapter 11 says in verse 6, Without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists. And He is a rewarder of those who earnestly, who diligently seek him. If you seek him, you will find him. He will not be elusive forever. I believe that sometimes the way that I view my walk with God, the way that I view my pursuit of him, my journey with him, my walk with him, is it is a constant moving forward. And we're the ones that very often want to stand still. We want to set up camp oh, this was amazing today, this was incredible, and then we want to stay in this place. But every experience we have in God is for the sake of moving us forward. God is constantly moving forward. But sometimes we're the ones that want to stay. It's safe here. It's comfortable here. I'm used to this. I'll just set up camp here because this is where it's easy. This is what I'm used to. But God's moving forward, and He wants us to then pursue after Him because He's going somewhere. And he wants us to go with him. And sometimes that's the reason why we no longer feel God. Because God's not here anymore. God's moved on. And he's calling us to him. And we've then got to move forward. Pursue after his presence. Value his presence. He loves it. He loves it when we chase after him. He loves it. He loves the chase. He loves the game. Thirdly, last thing. When we, the church, truly seek him and find him, I believe that that's whenever revival comes. We're wanting revival in this community. We're not wanting to be reading any more stories of a young woman like Kelly. We're fed up with those stories. We hold the key, church. We are the answer. As we begin to prepare for 39 plus 1 and we carry a cross around these communities and we're able to walk up beside people and give them leaflets and we talk to them about Jesus and we talk to them about the cross. The cross is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And people are, are pursuing their own vision, pursuing their own thing when all along the answer is Jesus. And we hold the answer, church. In this place, we've got it. This is the answer. This is the solution. And we've got to make people aware that Jesus is the answer to your problems, to your issues. Yeah, it's not going to be easy, but you've got to pursue Him. You've got to pursue His presence. And so as we come, as we gather, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. This is a word for the church. This is a word for the church. This is not a word for people outside of church. This is a word for Christians. This is a word for church. If my people, if my people 
called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. This is where revival lies, church. We've got to pursue him. We've got to seek his face. If we want to see revival, worship team, you can come. If we want to see revival in this land, we've got to seek his face. If we want to see breakthrough in this nation, we've got to pursue his presence. If you want to see personal breakthrough in your own life, in your own situations, then keep seeking the Father. Keep pursuing his presence in a dry and parched land, in a dry and parched situation. Keep seeking him. Keep pursuing the Father. Keep moving forward. He may well have distanced himself from you, but it's only because he's moved forward and you need to move with him. You need to pursue and chase after him and after his presence. Jeremiah 29 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. With all of your heart. Sometimes after five minutes, we don't feel the presence of God. Then he's gone and we leave. With all of your heart, how much do you value his presence? You value his presence, you will pursue him with all of your heart. Value his presence. Value his presence. Pursue his presence. Chase after him. He wants us to pursue him. And he will allow us to catch hold of him. He'll allow us to enter his presence. And whenever we do that as a church, whenever we say that we exist to be a place where the glory and the presence of God flows, fr- flows freely through our worship, when we come and we, we gather together as, as the church, as the body of Christ, pursuing the presence of God, His presence will fall in this place. His glory will fall in this place. When we do away with everything else and we turn our attention, our thoughts, our heart, everything, we turn to God to focus on Him and we lift up Him in this place then, Oh my goodness, God will move in this place.